What's going on y'all? My name is Jeff Rose and welcome to my channel, Wealth Hacker Labs. This is the channel dedicated to teaching you new ways to grow wealth that is not taught to you in schools or by your parents. And welcome to the first edition of a glass board episode. Yes, this is a legit glass board. I've been wanting to use this board for quite some time. Just wanna give a big shout out to Marco from Whiteboard Finance. Be sure to check out his channel. He was a big inspiration for me finally getting this thing some good use. And when I was trying to think about what was, what was the video, what was the topic that I was going to use for the very first Glassboard episode, I, it didn't take me long to figure out that I had to talk about one of my most favorite books of all time. That book is Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. And if you've been on my channel for any time, you'll, you'll see that I, I talk about this book a lot. And the reason is because this is one of the first books, this was the first book that I read that completely changed my mindset on the capabilities of growing wealth, of getting rich. And, and just because I didn't come from a family that taught me any of the stuff that he talked about in that book. So I, I had to give another shout out to him and, and really talk about one of his key concepts, which is the cash flow quadrant. And this is something that if you're familiar with this, you kind of get the idea, but many people don't get it. And this whole cash flow quadrant really was just one of those things that really just changed my mindset and made me realize like what it took to go from being poor to getting rich. And also made me realize that I, I didn't understand this stuff. Like I wasn't doing it. I was staying on the poor side, which we'll talk about here in a second. Uh, so I want, I want to talk about this concept, but even more so, I want to show you how in my own personal journey that I have gone through the different quadrants and the things I did and the steps I took. And that's why I wanted to talk about uh, why I want to talk about this cash flow quadrant. So for those that aren't familiar with the cash flow quadrant, you know, this is basically the four different ways that Kiyosaki talks about that you can make money. Uh, so these are the four different ways. And the ultimate goal that you want to do is that you want to get on the right side of the quadrant. Because if you're on the left side of the quadrant, you are staying poor, having that poor mindset. So you wanna go from poor and you want to become rich. And the only way to do that is to go to this side. So how do you get to this side? What does this look like? And what do all these letters stand for? So starting off, E stands for employee. So this is your typical nine to five. You know, those are, you, you probably have experienced this. You've got your nine to five job, you're clocking in, you're clocking out. This is what most people are accustomed to. And I know for me and what, you know, what Kiyosaki really talked about in that, in Rich Dad Poor Dad was how most of us are taught. Most of us are trained to go to school, get a degree, get a good job, work to your, your 70, put in your 401k, and then you retire. And that's one way to do it. And that's most certainly what I was taught to do. But if you want to become rich, like that's, that's not the path that you need to take. So when I was reading this book, like I was an employee. And even before I was employee, like, or before I started my career, you know, I wasn't working on that. I had my, my mall job. I used to work at GNC uh, selling vitamins in the mall. I had retail jobs and I was used to that whole concept. And what you are, when you are here, when you are an employee, essentially what you are doing is you are trading your time for money. And the one thing we, uh, that I think we all know is that there is only so much time in the day. You can only work so many hours per week. You can only work so much overtime. And if you are not actively working, then you are not making any money. And that's not how you get rich. So for me, as I mentioned, like, you know, I had my mall jobs while I was in college, but then when I graduated, started my career as a financial advisor, I it had the appearance that I was building my own business, which, I kind of was, but the reality was that I was working for a brokerage firm and I was a W-2 employee. So that means that the employer took care of all my taxes, you know, it gave me a paycheck, 
But what it also did was it gave me that security of, you know, they provided health insurance. They took care of my computer and my desk and the, the heating bill and the internet and phones and all that stuff, right? So all I had to do was go out and try to find new clients. So I felt like I was, I was building a business, but I was still working the nine to five. I still had a boss, you know, to, uh, to adhere to. I, it, I still had the chance of getting fired. And with a lot of people like this is where they stay. This is, they don't get out of here because the, it's security, it's safe. And if this is you, like, if that's what you want, then like, that's totally, totally fine. But once again, for me, reading Rich Dad Poor Dad, it just changed my mindset. And I knew that if I really wanted to build wealth, if I wanted to accelerate my wealth building, I had to get on this side. So for me, the next step was the S quadrant. So S stands for self-employed. So a self-employed, you know, this could be a business owner, it could be an entrepreneur, but the idea now is that it's up to you to decide, you know, how you're gonna get paid. Like, what are you going to do? What service are you going to offer? What product are you going to sell? Do you need to hire people? Do you have to find a building? Do you need vehicles? Like all that stuff. So from here, I was an employee working for a brokerage firm, was there for five years. And then whenever they got bought out, uh, that's when I left and started, co-founded an independent financial planning firm with three other advisors. So I went from the W-2 fi financial advisor to now I'm an independent FA. So the big difference for me here was up here, the brokerage firm I was working for took care of all my expenses. Now it was up to me to decide where my office was going to be. What, uh, what software did I need in my computer? What computer did I need to buy? Do I need a laptop? I had to buy a desk. We had to find you know, our office space. We had to get our phone lines. Uh, health insurance now was on me. So there was all these things that factored, all these other things I didn't have to deal with here, now I had to deal with here. And for me and my personal experience, now the beauty is that, so yes, I'm self-employed and I'm still, I'm still trading time for money here, right? Because like, I still have to do the work. But the beautiful thing here is when I went to self-employed, I started making more money because I was able to control my expenses. The revenue was there. I was able to get a little bit more because inherently I took on more risk. And because of that, I was able to make more. But I still was trading time for money. And the common thing I see with a lot of self-employed people is that, you know, they, they, they think that they're successful because they don't have a boss uh, to, to answer to. But the reality is like, I see so many people that they, they think they're actually better here because they're on their own, but they just don't do a good job of running a business. And I was able to find some, some stats that show like the average salary of a self-employed individual. And in my research, like what I found was the average salary of a self-employed individual is $36,000 per year. Um, that's not a lot of money. Sure, you don't have a boss, but still like you're not making a lot of money. And it's because a lot of time with self-employed people, they're good at what they do. They might have a certain skill that they're good at, uh, they're good at a certain trade, but they're not good at running a business. They're not good at hiring other people. They're not good at delegating. They're not good at outsourcing. So all they basically have is, is just, it's a job. I mean, it's a job that they are the boss of, but they're still a, it's still a job and they're still trading time for money, maybe making more or potentially even making less. So in my own journey, you know, I started off as a W-2 employee, went to the independent side where I co-founded an investment firm. So now I'm self-employed and you know, this is when it starts to get fun. So now for me, the next journey was going over to the business owner. So now self-employed B stands for business owner. So for me in my personal journey, this is when I founded my registered investment advisory firm, my independent wealth 
management firm. This is when I basically broke off from the partners I had here and then started my own firm, which was Alliance Wealth Management. And somewhere in this process is when I joined a business coaching program. And when I joined that coaching program, that's when I truly started to appreciate and understand what it meant to have a team. I understood what it truly meant to where you don't have to do everything. For example, for a lot of time here, I was doing everything. I was doing paperwork. I was in charge of scheduling uh, appointments with my clients. And just that going, that back and forth, when I would go with people trying to schedule time for them to come in, uh, you know, it's like you send an email out, it's like, oh, these times work, no, that doesn't work. Okay, well, send me another email. And you just try to coordinate that time. And whereas if I had to realize, like, that's, that's not what I should be doing. That's not what, um, that's not what I get paid to do. And really just thinking about like a, like a doctor's office, you know, if you call a doctor's office, if you go to the doctor, you know, when you go there to check in, like you're not checking in with the doctor. You know, when you're calling your doctor's office trying to schedule an appointment, you know, the doctor is not picking up to answer the phone, you know, it's the receptionist. So that's when I started recognizing like, man, I need to like build my team out, need to do more. Um, and that's really when I started relying on other people. So the, the key thing here, what the big takeaway here from the joining that business coaching program uh, to becoming a business owner is I was finally able to understand what my unique ability was. So my unique ability or your unique ability is defined as what is the thing, what is your skill set, what is the, the, the passion that you have, that you enjoy doing, that you love to do, and most importantly, you get paid well for doing it. So for me, my unique ability was not scheduling client appointments. It was not doing paperwork. It was meeting with clients. It was putting together proposal, like financial plans for clients initially, and then I ended up outsourcing that as well, and I recognized that I could hire somebody else to do it. So here I formed Alliance Wealth Management, Unique Ability, and this is really when I started my processes and systems in my business. So I started seeing like, okay, what are the things that, that, that I do? You know, I basically started to download all the things in my head, all the ways that I did things, because like I have a certain way, you know, that I do my financial plans, I have a certain way that I meet with clients and follow up with clients. So I started just documenting all of those processes and then hiring my, uh, my office manager, then hiring a junior advisor and then training them so that when I wasn't there, they were able to run the business without me. And like, that was huge for me. That was huge. Um, in addition to this, so I actually started the blog, Good Financial Sense here, but really coming to this side, so this would be my blog, is I started applying the exact same things to that business as I did my financial planning practice. So I started recognizing like, what is my unique ability with the blog? And that was, content creation, coming up with the ideas of, to publish content, like to, to market it, uh, networking with other site owners and other bloggers. And because of that, you know, I just started removing all these things off my plate to focus more time on the things I got paid on. So one example of that was a site that I started um, somewhere in the middle here was a life insurance site. The site was Life Insurance by Jeff. Dot com. That site has since been redirected to Good Financial Sense. That's a whole other story. But what I applied from learning about systems and processes and all that I did with my financial planning practice and in that blog, I launched that site from scratch and was able to outsource 85% of everything that I was doing uh, on that site. And within 
a year's time, that site made over $100,000 in 12 months. And the beauty is that the work that I put into that was just a fraction of what I did with everything else. But because I had the experience of doing it before and I recognized that I could outsource a lot of that stuff, like what I would call like your crap tasks, the things that just suck the life out of you. When I was able to outsource all of that and, and not do it, um, I basically got out of the way and hired the right people and that's why we had that success. And the beautiful thing about here is, yes, you've got people, right? But right now, it's not dependent on you. The people, you're basically util utilizing their time to make you more money. And just a, a recent example I can give you, just a, a testament to this and, and why this works is uh, just a few weeks ago, I went to a seven day retreat and this retreat, I was completely unplugged, meaning that I had no, no laptop, no, no internet, no email, no social media, nothing for seven days. Seven days, I was completely unplugged from my business. And if you were on this side of the quadrant, if you were an employee or if you were self-employed, if you're an employee and you're gone for seven days, like you're not getting paid unless you, you're cashed in your vacation time. With self-employed, I mean, there may be a, a client issue come up, um, but if you're a service provider and let's say that you're a plumber or you're a contractor of some kind and you're not doing the work, like you're not getting paid. Or if there's an issue with the client and they're trying to contact you and you don't have a team in place, like you're gonna get fired. And maybe you can get sued because you know, you're, you've, you've let, they think you've skipped town or left the country. But in my case, because of having a team, having the processes in place, when I came back from that seven days, when I finally opened up my email, I didn't have one single issue. I didn't have one fire to put out from my business. And that's because of having the team, having the processes, having the systems in place to where it was cranking as if like I, I was there. And that, that concept, be able to do that and get on this side of the quadrant and become that, like that, when I finally realized, wow, like that's what it means. Like that's how wealthy people make money while they're chilling on the beach. <laughs> it finally made sense to me. And a lot of that is just getting out of the way, focusing on what you do well uh, and hire the right people to take care of the rest for you. So that is the business side. And then the side, uh, the quadrant that we all aspire to get to is the I quadrant, which stands for investor. And the key thing about this category, or this quadrant is, this is where you hear that common phrase is, you want your money to work for you. So basically now your money is, 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 is doing all the work. Like you don't have to do anything, basically just, invest your money, sit back, collect the earnings, collect the dividends, whatever that looks like. And for me, like this is, this is the quadrant that I'm just now, I don't say just now, but more dipping my toes into. So the idea here is that if I had all my investments and I put that into, uh, or all my money put that into investments, so now all the earnings, all the interest is basically funding our lifestyle, uh, like that's where I would be in, a, in full transparency. I'm not quite there yet. Not so much because I don't have the money, but more so is because of the way that we like to live. You know, the Rose family, we like to travel. We like to eat out. We like uh, the finer things. I have more Jordan ones than I, than I need. Uh, so I definitely do not fall into the fire category of financially independent, retire early. Like that's not me. Uh, me, I'm more about building new things, creating new things, and basically making more. Like that's, it's just a passion for mine. It's fun, it's like it's a challenge to see if I can do it. But in my case here, so on the investor side, so this is where you can invest into your stocks, your bonds, real estate, your commodities, cryptocurrency,
it goes on and on and on. Now, for me personally, so like a lot of what I have is, is in, the, in stocks, uh, but the thing that I'm really looking at for me on the investor side is I want to invest into other sites. So other websites, other site owners, other uh, partnerships to where now I'm investing into something and I'm not really doing the work. I'm just partnering with somebody that has the idea that maybe just needs the experience, the leverage, uh, the know-how. And that's why you'll see a lot of uh, wealthy people, especially younger wealthy people, that they have all the money they'll ever need in their life. And, and like now what do they do? You know, they sold their business for 5 million, 10 million, 30 million. And now it's like, okay, I have all this money. What do I do? So a lot of times what they'll do is like they'll take a lot of that money and reinvest it back into other startups, like other younger versions of themselves and give them guidance, be an advisor to them. And then if that business is, is successful, now they just make that much more money. Uh, you think of like Elon Musk taking all his money from PayPal and investing that into Tesla and SpaceX. Like that's just an example of, of how that works. So the cool thing is whenever you are here, now your money is making more money. And even more beautiful is that you aren't having to work for it because now it's just, you just sit back, you invest it and just let the interest compound, let the, let the earnings do their things, sit back and enjoy. Now in Kiyosaki's book, he talks about that only about 5% of the population actually fall into the I quadrant. Now, I don't know sure where he got that information. I, I think it's a lot less personally because I don't see a lot of people that reach this stage. Many people get stuck here. Some go over to here and I've been blessed to be around people that get this, get this concept. And a lot of them are building those teams, building those processes to get more here. But I see so many more people on the left side of the quadrant. But what I'm trying to show you in my own personal example is that it's possible to go from left to right. You don't have to stay over here. Uh, the one thing I probably didn't mention was that going from here to here was a almost like a three to five year process. So this is not an overnight thing. It took a while. You know, when I initially read Rich Dad Poor Dad, like that was way back here. That would have been probably 10 years prior to actually getting over here. So I just want to challenge you that if you think that you have to stay on the left side, if you think you've got to stay broke, you've got to stay poor and work for the man and, and not do things for yourself, I challenge your beliefs in that. I challenge that mindset that you can't make a change, that you can't make a shift. It's all about taking necessary steps. And one of the biggest things I talk about for most people is just starting a side hustle, starting something where you are trying to make money outside of your nine to five job. And I don't care what it is, and one of the big milestones I talk about, and I share this in another video, is if you can go out and create something, so that could be a product, it could be a service, whatever it is, right? To make $100 with selling something yourself through a service, or you created a product of some kind, but being able to make $100 outside of your nine to five job, outside of being an employee, that can give you so much momentum to continue to grow it, to continue to explore, continue to see what other opportunities are out there. But most people, they just, they don't even want to take that risk because they're just so afraid to fail. But the one thing that, that if this doesn't shout out to you that to go from this side to this side, to go from the left side to the right side of the quadrant, you have to take risks. You have to, there's, there's no way, there's no way around it. Now you can, you can take safe risk and you could do a lot of research and dip your toes in before you plunge. But either way, there has to be some risk involved. Otherwise you're going to stay broke. You're never going to get rich. All right, y'all. So I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough of Kiyosaki's Cashflow Quadrant. As I mentioned, this was a huge inspiration, a huge mindset shift for me on what I needed, the, the changes I needed in my life to go from broke to rich. So hope you got some value out of this. If you did, be sure to like, 
subscribe. And if this did provide any value, please share it with a friend, somebody that needs to see this, understand this, how this works, so that they can start making changes in their life to accelerate their wealth and just get out of that broke mindset. This is Jeff Rose reminding you that it's your money, it's your life, and only you can make it awesome.